This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys, and welcome to part three of Animation Basics in 3D. Well, as promised in the previous video, today we're going to talk about the graph editor. Okay, so let's check it out. Here we go. Okay, guys, well, the graph editor. Uh, for some reason, people are kind of scared of that thing. Uh, they think it's complicated, so we're going to look into it. We're going to talk about what it's for and how you use it. Okay, now keep in mind that this is an introduction course, so it's not going to be super complicated. I'm going to explain to you the basics of what it's for and how to use it. Okay, so uh, in order for us to do that, we first need to set up a quick scene and uh, do some keyframing so we can uh, create an animation. And that's basically something we covered in the last video, so it shouldn't be too painful. Okay, I'm going to take a polygon cube and I'm going to hit R and let's just uh, pull that out like so. And we're going to create something that will represent a wall. Okay, we're going to right click on a vertex. Drag right click these vertices, hit W and pull that up. All right, so that's our wall. Now we need an object to jump our wall. So we'll take another polygon cube. I'll move that over here and I'll jump into this view and just make sure that this guy is sitting on our grid and this guy as well. All right, so this is what we have, okay? Now, you need to keep in mind, once you animate something, uh, it will change values when you move it. So if we take this uh, cube here, and I'll just open up the channel box, you can see that the red arrow represents the X direction right here. And as I move that, you can see that the translation of values on X, this top box right there, is changing. As I move to the left, I get a higher negative value. If I move to the right, I get a higher value that even goes into the positive. And you can see that nothing else is changing. I'm not moving it up, so the translate Y is unchanged. I'm not moving it in that direction, so the Z value is not changed either. And because I'm not rotating it or changing the size, the rotation and skill values are not changing either. Okay? So again, value, value, and value, all right? I'm just going to hit Control Z to go back to our starting point. And now it's time to do a quick manual keyframe animation. So what we're going to do is we're going to set up our animation. Again, make sure you're in Windows Workspace Classic. We're going to select our cube and we're going to go down here and make sure our animation is set to 200 frames. And I want all 200 frames visible on my screen. So I'm going to set that to 200 as well. So now I have frame zero all the way up to frame 200. Now, what do I want to animate? This cube. I want it to jump my wall, okay? So I'm gonna make sure that I'm in frame one right here. It's selected and I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard to create a keyframe. There we go. And as we do that, you see this red marker here indicating that all these values have now been keyframed, okay? So I'm gonna drag my um, animation slider to let's say frame 70 and there we go once we're there i'm going to move this to the right i'm going to move it up because i want it to jump my wall now i'm happy with that position so i'm going to hit the s key again we're going to move on to let's say frame 140 and again i'm going to move it over here i'm going to move it down i want to make sure it's sitting on my grid as before, like so. And once again, I'm gonna hit S to keyframe. So now I got a keyframe here, here, and here. So if I scrub through this animation, you can see that this cube goes up over my wall, comes down again, and ends up at that position, okay? So that's all there's to it. Well, if animation is that easy, then why do we have the graph editor? Well, we have the graph editor for the simple reason that that will give us more control uh, of our animation uh, when it comes to the details, okay? So if you want an action to happen, let's say a few frames earlier or later, and you want to get a visual feeling of what's going on, you would use the graph editor for that, okay? So it's time to open that up. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go to Windows, Workspaces, and instead of Classic, I'm gonna select Animation right there. 
couple of things happen. First of all, on the left here, we have our outliner. Uh, I have two cubes going on. One is my wall, one is my cube here, uh, the one that I animated. And then I got my perspective view going on here. I can click here if I want to see more views, let's say my top and so forth. But I'm only interested in my perspective right now. And then down here, we have our graph curves and we have this layout here that I will explain, okay? And up here, we still have our channel box. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, remember that on frame one, we started by selecting our cube and hitting S to keyframe everything. Well, the question is, was that really necessary? For the simple reason that there are a number of values that haven't changed. For example, when I uh, said that I would uh, keyframe everything, I also keyframed rotation values and scale values. Well, we didn't scale anything, we didn't rotate anything, so why did I keyframe that, okay? So if you go in here, we got three colors. We got red, green, and blue. Red is our X value, which is equal to this arrow right there. And then we got Y, which is green, that goes up, and blue for Z, that goes that way, okay? Just gonna hit Control Z to make sure I'm at my starting point. And we're gonna check out what we got here. So we have an X value for our translation, which means movement. We have a red X value for rotate. And we can see that that line is completely flat. Well, it's flat because the value has not changed at all. Okay, we didn't scale anything. So we can go up to edit and delete. We don't need it. What about uh, rotation in this value? Nope, same deal. How about rotation in this value? Nope. So we're gonna select these two and again, go to edit and delete. How about scaling? Nothing going on, nothing going on, nothing going on. They're all flat line, okay? So one, two, and three, edit and delete. Okay, so what do we have left? We got a translate value in X. We can see that something's going on there. We got a translate value in uh, Y. You can see that something's going on there. And we have a translate value in Z and nothing is going on there, okay? Because like I said, we didn't move our cube in this direction. And because of that, we can select it and go to edit, delete, which leaves us with these two. And it also tells you that initially when we selected that cube and hit uh, S to keyframe everything, you didn't necessarily have to here and keyframe the translate X value manually, right? Selecting this, right clicking and going to set key. And that's in here somewhere, key selected, okay? So select our cube again, otherwise this is all gone. So let's look into these values. What do they tell us? Let's go into the red or X value translation, uh, also known as movement. And as we scrub through our animation, we see our cube going up and we see the line going up as well, which is cool. But then we see our cube going down and the red line is still going up. So what's that all about? Well, this red line does not represent your movement of the cube. It represents the value in the translate X box, okay? X box, yeah, that's funny. All right, so if we are on the middle of our grid right here, okay? If we move to the left, our X value starts to become negative, okay? If we move it to the right, our X value starts to become positive. And that's what you see represented here in this line. So it's not the movement up and down. It is a representation of the values in these boxes here. So back to frame one. So right now I'm way to the left from my origin on my grid. So I got a negative value, which in this case is minus 9.38. And as I start to animate and move to the right, you can see that my translate X value is starting to go up into a positive number and it's going higher and higher and higher because I'm going further to the right, regardless whether I'm going up or down. And that's what you see represented in this curve. Okay, I hope that's, uh, I hope you understand. Okay, so we're gonna go back to frame one and let's look at the other one. So translate Y. Well, translate Y is a different deal because that represents the Y value being the up value or down, going up or down. So it makes sense that as the uh, cube goes up, the value for Y would go up as well. 
And as it goes down, the value for y would go down as well. That's why, purely by coincidence, this curve looks like the movement because the values going up and down represents the movement as well. Okay? All right. So now that we know all that, what do we do with this? Well, I said uh, that we wanted to get more control over animation. Okay? So the keyframes here, this dot here, here, and here, are these keyframes, one, two, and three. So I got one at frame one, I got one at frame 70, and I got one at frame, what is it, 140, okay? So let's say I want to manipulate this keyframe in the middle. It's going over our wall right there, and I'll just try to make that more visible, like so. So what if I want to move that? I can drag select this keyframe, I can left click on it, and I can move this, all right? And in this case, because we got the control for our Y value, I can have it go higher or lower. So if I wanted to go just over our wall, I can pull it down a bit, or I can push it up. And again, I'll just tweak this a little bit. I can push this up because I want it to go over my wall, but much higher, higher, okay? So once I've done that, I can now go back, and you can see that it's going way higher than before which is good. So for our green curve, which represents our X value, you can see that this number is going up and up and up as it moves to the left. And there you can control that as well. You cannot control the height, but you could, for example, change the way that the curve moves, okay? So for example, this curve right here, if I were to drag select this, I would get these handles. And what I can do is kind of change the angle there. Okay, so now what will happen is it will go basically straight up from where it started and then go over. So it doesn't smooth into it, it goes straight up. Now if, if I want the exact opposite, I would try to get that as flat as possible, basically like so. And then you would see a much smoother transition. So that is basically how that works. Well, hopefully this uh, short little tutorial was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comment section. And don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, okay? Well, thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye. Well, thanks for watching. And before you go, please hit that MH button to subscribe, okay? See you guys next time. Bye.